guys and welcome to the video about my self-sustaining peat bog farm. As you can see I've got my peat bog here. So I set out to build, I've built all this in creative. I set out to build a peat bog farm that would sustain itself. It wouldn't need any interaction from my myself to, to keep itself running and producing peat. Which I also decided I wanted to make into fertilizer to to craft um, biomass. So down here in the little workroom, I have all the, the electronics and stuff I've connected, and I've also gone ahead and I've set up some sugarcane farms above, and tried to make it into to biomass, but it's not working too well. So I won't be doing the tutorial on all the biomass stuff, which is on this side of the room over here. I will just be uh, doing a video on how to make the fertilizer, which stops at the end of the line here. This is the fertilizer crafting. Yeah. So after that, there won't be any of this, which is all this line here that comes down from above. This crafting table is not going to be in the tutorial. It's just making plant balls. Into the fermenters. Because I've it's occurred to me that I'm not being overly efficient by putting water into the fermenters and I'm not really making enough plant balls even though I have three sugarcane farms up there so I'm not 100% sure to I don't want to provide a, a tutorial on how to make something that isn't working great it's just not how I roll but the bit that is working great is the peat, peat farm and um, yeah it's fully sustainable and the way I've done it I uh, actually have this whole thing powered by a biomass engine at the moment, but it wouldn't take much to, say, power it with... It, it's, it's not powering much, you only have to power the one, the peat bog, and, um... can't think of its name now. The thing that harvests it, yeah. Starts with the... <laughs> can't even think of it. Never mind, doesn't matter. Uh, you guys can look that up. <laughs> Actually, if I just pick block on it. Turbary, that was it. Uh, so the way I've done all this, uh, to make bog earth, which is what the peat bog requires, it's bog earth, it requires bog earth, clearly. Uh, so that's being made here, just here, in the recipe. Now, it takes four dirt, four sand, and a bucket of water to make that. And every bog earth you put into the system, it'll give you a dirt back for every bog earth. So I'm already creating more dirt than I need to craft it again. So I have a system here that is taking out two dirt every six that comes in. If that makes any sense at all. I also have this, which is a pulverizer and a cobblestone generator to make sand. So every time a dirt comes into the system, this block breaker fires, goes into the pulverizer, is made into sand, the sand comes out the pipe, up, around, and down to the other side of here, where it's stored. Until it gets to four, and when it's four in there, four in there, it'll pull it out and send it back into the machine, up the pipe over here. All the dirt is currently coming down this stone pipe, and it runs over here into this chest where it's held, and then that is piped through an item counter under here and into the chest over here. So it's a little confusing. Uh, the peat is coming out of the turbary there, coming down around into this chest, which is the buffer for the item counter. So any peat, that, no, it doesn't matter how fast it comes out of the machine. And then this here regulates the flow, which is a tra uh, transposer. So it regulates the flow coming out of the chest here. And that runs through some pneumatic tubing, which is in behind here. Into an item detector from Red Power 2. That item detector triggers a T flip-flop that's below it. Now, the reason for the T flip-flop is because... Without the T flip flop, I am unable to detect the item detector's pulse from within the computer craft code that is controlling this whole system. 
we'll get to that in just a moment. So that flicks the T flip flop and then the computer also has a wire to reset the T flip flop after it's counted it. If that makes any sense. Well it should. It comes out and it goes, uh, the peak comes into here where it's made into ash put into the chest there. So every every eight ash that comes through the item counter here, or every eight peat I should say, which translates to every eight ash, I also do some work in the code to trigger the sand generator over here, and I steal a sand from the sand chest and put it into this chest here to move the fertilizer. A little confusing, but you should understand it all when we're done. So I think the best way to do this would be to turn it on. Uh, so let's take a look at the code a little bit. Um, the code is reliant on this lever being on, so if I turn the lever off here, it won't run, but the code will start up and go into a paused mode. So my program is actually called test, I haven't renamed it yet. So let's look at edit. Can't even type, Jesus Christ. So, initialize some variables, set up, start up equals true, uh, zero, um, let's just so it initializes the variable so we can use it later. Then we enter into the main while loop, it's more or less a hacky loop, so it keeps running after the resume system. Then we have a reboot system, the reboot system is called every time the lever is turned on again after being off. So, it, it just toggles one, which is the output for the, the main, uh, uh, this is hard to explain, but I've wrote some functions which are just down here. I have a pulse function and a toggle function that I wrote. And basically they just either toggle or pulse the wire to the machines. And they're reusable within the code and I've used them all over the place. Basically so I didn't have to keep typing rs.send or set bundled output because that would have drove me out the wall. Um, but yeah, it toggles one, which is the white wire, turns it on, so all the power of the machines. If I come over, for example, yeah, I mean, fuel, you'll see the white wire is connected to the machine to power it. Uh, under the floor there is quite a mess <laughs> of wires. And detectors, wires running everywhere, controlling everything. And I've got a, a global change here, so if you don't want to run the wire below the computer, computer at the bottom of the computer, you can actually just change it just here, and it'll change it everywhere else in the code for you automatically. Uh, just a little bit of customization I built in. I keep trying to use the mouse on the computer, it's so annoying. So while the... Then we start the main while loop here. This is the actual bit that checks all the, the item detectors. Uh, so while the redstone lever is on, on the left side of the computer, do all this stuff. So first, here, it pulses 16, which is the transposer that pulls the dirt out of the dirt buffer. Um, then we check all the outputs, so that is dirt equals rs.get bundled output. That, uh, Checks, checks to see if the T flip flop was turned on, and if it, if uh, then we compare it to what it should be, and if so, it, it resets the T flip flop here with a pulse, and then we just increase the dirt count by one, and it also prints out how many dirt you have. If the dirt is great, uh, if the dirt is less than five, we also create a sand. So we're only creating four sand, um, so the fifth and sixth dirt that comes in, we do not make a sand for, because they are going to be removed. Here, when dirt equals six, then dirt equals zero, print dirt count reached, yeah. And then it pulses two times. So the pulse function works with the cable ID, the times you want to pulse, and then how long between each pulse. Which is just basic, it's really not that complicated to write. And after it's done dealing with the dirt, and we go on to counting the peat. So it'll count dirt, count peat, count dirt, count peat, in a constant loop. 
So it pretty much does the same thing again for counting the peat, except for when the peat, it doesn't do anything when the peat gets over 5 or whatever, it just only does stuff when the peat gets to 8. And it'll, it'll rest for 13 here, but this 13 probably needs adjusting a little bit, probably maybe 15, because it's not always getting a sand when it should be. Then we have uh, checking at the end of that loop to see if the input is not on. Then we go into a, a sort of halting state. So when the lever is turned off, it'll clear the screen, set the position back to 1, turn the main power wide off, turn the reboot system on, print out some messages, and then it goes into this uh, constant while loop. While not redstone dot get input, so while the lever's off, do it just sleeps, and then it'll check to see if the lever's on again. Sleeps, check lever sleep until you turn the lever on again. So let's uh, save this, exit, and we'll run test. So I'll probably change some of these messages just to just see if it all before I release the code. But it's now turned on, and it's waiting for the lever to be turned on. Oh, and in case you wondered, this void pipe here is set to the yellow side. Because when you pulverize the cobble, it sometimes makes gravel, and... I didn't need the gravel, so I just... Yeah. Void pipe. Bye-bye. So as you can see, this is just a little bit laggy for me. The server's not... Got a great deal of RAM. <laughs> But I hope to change that because I want to make the server pay to play. And then I can afford to get a bigger server. So I've got a little bit of biomass in here that it's made, 17,000. But it, it could be making a lot more, and I'm not really happy with it. I think I might look into using Steve's carts or something to do a tree farm. Because a tree farm with forestry is just a nightmare. I have to make hummus, and it's just, yeah. More of a pain than the peat farm. And the sugarcane farms are just not keeping up with the plant balls. So I want to use apples for the fermenters to make juice and whatnot as well. So that's my uh, my peat farm. Should be. Did the peat engine not start? The biomass engine not start? It did not start. This is a bug with forestry. It's got everything it needs, but it doesn't start. And the only way to fix it is to break it, place it, and put the lava in it again. Quite an annoying bug. Because I waste fuel, it waste lava. server like than clients. So let's uh, share inside the screen here again. So it's counting the dirt. Um, while it's doing that, I'll expose some of the wires. It's pretty much the same as what's up on the wall over there. Well, actually, it's not pretty much. It is the same as what's on the wall over there. It takes three wires to count the items. And I do have a cheat sheet uh, written down for what each wire does. But I generally don't need it because I've worked with this the last three days and just pretty much memorized it all. <laughs> so yeah, this system over here needs to go. It needs to be changed. Uh, it needs apple juice. And it needs more plant balls, so... I'm not going to do a tutorial on this part over here, I probably won't even include the tank, I'll just have a chest at the back of this machine here that'll catch the fertilizer. You guys can do what you want with the fertilizer. No doubt, probably make biomass. But you can handle that on your own, because that system over there is really not complicated. It's just an auto-crafting table and some piping. And that big 
Dallas tank. <laughs> so that'll do it for this video guys, I think um, we'll have a better look at all this wiring and stuff in the next video when I start to do the tutorial. And the link to the tutorial will be in the description. Have fun, until next time, bye!